All right, Bulls and Bears, back with another dose of economic reality. I hope you are doing well. I apologize I didn't get a video out yesterday. Today, we've got a ton of economic financial news to get caught up on. Some very, very important topics to discuss. The rate cut, of course, everybody knows about that. But that should not have been the main story when it comes to the central bank uh, decision. Actually, what was said at the press conference uh, should open up a lot of eyes but not many people saw it because it came right towards the end of that press conference. I'm going to talk about what that means for inflation. In other words, Jerome Powell wants to pow, pow, pow people with inflation. We're going to talk about what that means here. A lot of stores closing, restaurants closing, new announcements. The stock market surged on the win of the presidential election back on the 5th, but confidence doesn't appear to be very strong. We have a lot of store closures, as I mentioned, and manufacturing facilities closing. So if it was so sure that the tariffs were going to work and bring down inflation and bring back all these jobs, why are we seeing manufacturing jobs still being announced here very heavily? I'm going to talk about consumer spending slow down, consumers loaded up on debt, folks. Going to get into it all. Please make sure you are subscribed. Very important financial economic news to stay ahead of here. Uh, let's get started right here. Of course, the rate cut, we all know that happened. A quarter point rate cut, no shock, no surprise. They've been forecasting this for a long, long time. So it's interesting that the central bank, they come out, they say they're data dependent, but yet they've been talking about cutting rates all the way back since what it was it June or July. So if they were data dependent, how did they know back in this mid-summer that they were going to be cutting rates here in November? So apparently they're not data dependent. It looks to be like another falsehood to say the least. Uh, Jerome Powell came out and said he would not resign if asked to step down by the incoming uh, quote unquote leader. So it's pretty interesting. He says it's not allowed under the law. So that right there should let you know who's really running things, right? If the president really ran things, uh, would you think that he would not be able to get rid of certain people like the chairman of the Fed? So it tells you who really runs things, right? It's not the president. It's the the banks. The banks run things. They run the economy, right? They run pretty much everything. They decide where the money goes. And where the money goes, that determines how the economy will function or malfunction in this case. But it usually functions very well for the people at the top. Um, for example, the recent surge in the stock market saw several billionaires increase their wealth. Uh, the victory here added $64 billion to wealth of the richest top 10. Right? We told her that the top 10% own close to 90% of all stocks out there. So when the stock market goes up, you know who's really making the money. Well, just the top 10 people, not even the whole top 10%, just the top 10 individuals, $64 billion in the recent post-election surge in the stock market, folks. That is insane. Uh, people like Musk, Bezos, uh, Bryn, Gates uh, all benefited from that stock market surge. Consumers are getting closer and closer to being tapped out. They slowed down their spending in September. Credit card debt, aka credit, expanded by $6 billion. That's lower than the $12 billion consensus and decelerating from August 7.64 billion, which re was revised down from 8.93 billion. So people are still getting further into debt, but they're spending more slowly. They're being more cautious and not all by choice. Some people do not have a choice because remember a lot of those credit cards are maxed out and more close to being maxed out. So it's not just the people are pulling back uh, willingly, some of this, they just don't have the available credit. Now, of course, if people have credit, history shows us that they will spend it. Debt increases for the most part. There are people paying off debt, don't get me wrong. But when you look at the population as a whole, debt continues to increase until there's some sort of breaking point or crisis. And then you see debt drop as bankruptcy surge, foreclosures accelerate, job losses mount, Etc. Now, the economic engineers have been doing everything they can do to keep that from happening. They've been keeping banks loaning out money, of course, dropping rates now, and everything else that could be done, keeping the banks propped up, 
um, insuring depositors even beyond the $250,000 FDIC, what used to be the limit. Now there's no limit because remember, billionaires got reimbursed for the money they had in these failed banks in 2023. So the rules completely twisted around, changed, uh, moving the goalpost, so to speak, to keep this economy from rolling over. Do you know what would have happened to the banking sector if the FDIC didn't cover all the billionaires that had deposits in those banks? You would have witnessed a massive bank run like you would have never seen before, way worse than 2008, because confidence would have been lost. Imagine all the billionaires losing faith in the banks because they saw their buddies or their uh, cohorts lose a bunch of money at an institution. Uh, that would have caused a massive panic, billionaires taking their money out of the bank, and a whole wave of bank failures. Of course, they couldn't let that happen. Therefore, they had to just scrap the $250,000 FDIC limit, and they had to go just borrow a bunch of money and add it to the debt in order to get these depositors their money back. Now, when it comes to the rate cuts, I think it's very important to go back and just look at some recent history. Let's go back about, say, 20 years, and every time rates are cut, it's as we're entering or after we've already entered a pretty big economic downturn. Let's go ahead and bring up a chart here out of CNBC here. Early 2000s, rate cut into that recession there, economic downturn, raised rates back up, financial crisis dropped, lasted a while, rock bottom for years, tried to raise them in 2019, and we saw that short recession in 2020. Of course, they didn't get very high when they tried to raise them back then. And of course, we all know they had to drop them again. And now this most recent rise, very significant, especially when you compare it to the one in 2019 and the two ones prior. And now we're beginning to drop. So guess what's next, folks? Unless history completely does not repeat itself, or unless it really is different this time, we're going to see another downturn just in time. Uh, for the incoming uh, quote unquote leader to take office. Very interesting, isn't it? The timing on this. Um, will it be different this time? Yes, it'll be different this time. It'll be worse, uh, either inflationary or deflationary. Remember, inflation is much worse than deflation. Now, deflation typically comes with a ma massive, uh, speedy correction, markets dropping, panic, massive job losses, layoffs. Etc. So it's much more newsworthy and more people are afraid of that. But in my opinion, folks, never ending inflation is much, much worse. And when we go to the press conference here and you listen to what Jerome Powell said, I think you're going to be definitely understanding the direction they're going to take this economy. In other words, they're going to keep inflating, inflating, inflating until something comes in and breaks. What will that be? Nobody knows. When will it be? Nobody knows. Um, and that's the scary part. What if something doesn't come in to stop this inflation, to stop this monetary inflating, right? They're going to do everything they can to keep these markets propped up, folks. Uh, more closure announcements here. Uh, we have American Freight closing all locations here. This is out of Fox 4. Everything is on sale. American Freight, a chain of furniture stores operating in dozens of states, permanently closing all 328 stores, folks, after, quote, struggles with sustained inflation and macroeconomic challenges. Remember when we looked at the number of homes being sold, the volume is so low that we said there's going to be a massive fallout in the industries and in the retailers that rely on a lot of homes being sold. Furniture stores, American Freight, the chain of furniture stores. We're going to see a lot more furniture stores following in the footsteps of American Freight. And if American Freight was so confident about the economy and the new quote unquote leader taking over, uh, maybe they should have maybe held on for maybe six more months to see what was going to happen with the economy. So obviously they're not too confident that the economy is going to turn around. Uh, the same thing with some manufacturers here. Take a look at this. Pittsburgh area manufacturing facility set to close. Again, so if there was going to be this economic boom because of tariffs and because of all these jobs coming back, all this manufacturing demand, 
because everyone's going to be rich and wealthy and able to go out and buy everything they want. Why would the manufacturing facilities still be closing down? This is just one. Uh, there's others that we'll get to in a bit here. And you're going to have uh, layoffs in the hundreds uh, from that facility there, folks. And let's look at the big picture here. Store closings just soared past any full year since 2020. Folks, more signs that things are not improving, even with the new optimism, which I think is going to be very short-lived uh, and temporary. And when people see their debt and the cost of living, they're going to lose a lot of the optimism that they just found in the last few days, if you know what I mean. Uh, the most store closures since 2020. And remember, earlier in the year, we said we were on pace to beat 2023. We already beat that. And 2022 and 2021. The only year we haven't beat yet is 2020. Of course, we still have a little under two months to go. Uh, we'll see what happens, folks. Uh, but it's getting very, very interesting. Now, let's talk about what Mr. J. Powell said, Jerome Powell Fed uh, Chair, uh, in a news conference. Remember, it used to be the central bank said we need to average 2% inflation, meaning if inflation was over 2% for a number of years, then there needs to be deflation in order to average that out to 2%. In other words, if you have a couple years at 4%, then to average 2%, you need a couple years at 0% inflation. But not so fast, folks. That has changed. That whole 2% average, you don't hear him say that anymore. And listen to this reporter that asked a question here towards the end of this news conference. Let's go to Gene for the last, the last question. Take a listen. Hi, Chair Powell. Gene Young with MI Market News. Um, I wanted to go back to a comment that you had made about Americans being quite unhappy about the cumulative price level rises over the past few years. Cumulative price level rises, not inflation, because inflation just means prices are going up, but maybe not as fast as they were before. But Nonetheless, prices are still going up, but cumulative price levels. In other words, we need lower price levels, a.k.a. deflation. She didn't say the word deflation. She kind of danced around it, but take a listen to the question and listen to the answer here. Even though now inflation is back on a path to 2%, um, would it be appropriate for the Fed to undershoot for a while on its inflation goal under the average inflation targeting regime? The average inflation target. No more. Take a listen to the answer here. Um, so people have a chance to catch up. No, that's, that's not the way our framework works. We're, we're aiming for inflation at, at 2%. We're, we're, we do not we're aiming for inflation. Aiming for higher price levels. No deflation, folks. No relief. Not have, we did not think it would be appropriate to, uh, to deliberately undershoot. Um, uh, but if you want to average 2% and it's been running way over 2%, you would have to undershoot to average 2%. No men mention of any average now, even though she phrased the question to the way Fed, the Fed used to do this. It used to be goal of an average of 2%. And, you know, part of the problem there is that low inflation can be a problem too, uh, in a way. Uh, but that's not part of our framework, and it's not something we're going to be going to be looking at in our framework. Not part of our framework, not something we're going to be looking at. Low inflation could be a problem. What do we tell you right here in this channel? You have to have continuous debt accumulation and spending in order to keep the economy from freezing up or, two, imploding. Uh, it's got to be continuous debt accumulation. Why do you think they're finding new ways to get people into houses, down payment assistance programs? Why do you think they're talking about all this debt forgiveness, folks? It's, uh, it's a joke now. Thank you very much. <clears throat> There you go. No relief in sight, folks. Not shooting for any sort of price corrections, price levels, home affordability near the worst of all time, but no willingness to try to bring prices down. They do not want the bubbles to burst, folks. They're going to do everything they can to keep these bubbles inflated to infinity and beyond. Buzz Lightyear, folks. I mean, this is insane in the membrane. There's a 90s rap song in there somewhere. But folks, I mean, what do you think about this? No willingness, not even a thought about correcting some of these price levels, even though inflation is really, really hurting a lot of people. So what do we do? Obviously, we invest to take advantage of the obvious. They're going to continue 
to inflate. And yes, a black swan could come out any time, bring the markets down, something shocking, something that nobody sees. So remain cautious. Still have cash on the side in case you do see some sort of, again, a black swan surprise shock that brings the markets down. But you've got to be investing. I still hold stocks, um, not as much as I used to, but I still hold some stocks, all right? I'm a lot more cash now than I am in stocks. And the stocks that I'm holding actually went up a lot just in the past few days with this optimism. And I've already sold off so much, I'm not sure if I'll sell off anymore with this latest rise. I'll probably hold steady for a while to see what happens because I still see a lot of threats on the horizon. Yes, we got out of October and I said right here, they're going to try to keep this propped up at least until November 5th. And they did. And they did. But we're not out of the woods, folks. There's a lot of things boiling under the surface that... Many people aren't even talking about or even aware of. And what am I talking about here? Well, we're talking about a lot of famous people, a lot of people in positions of power, a lot of stars, a lot of very well-known people, both in the entertainment and financial world uh, that you might find out have been doing some pretty bad stuff. You think what Mr. J. Powell and his central bank crew is doing, you think that's bad? Well, multiply that by... 10,000, you know, I don't know, but it's going to be uh, pretty mind blowing here. So be cautious, folks. That's all I'm saying. Continue to make money. Cryptos went up, uh, stocks back up again. Uh, are you jumping back into the markets with this optimism? Or are you like myself? Are you remaining cautious? Right. And I'm not selling off more stock. I'm not, but I'm not buying more stock right now either. In fact, I'm still looking for things to short uh, as there's still opportunity, even. When they say they're going to inflate, 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 uh, no thoughts of trying to bring price levels down. Even when they say that, there's still areas that you can still invest. Look at the shorts that we did here on this channel. Uh, the stocks that we bet were going to go down, did pretty well on those. Uh, look at some other things, automobile prices coming down, uh, certain bubbles slowly deflating. The housing market, believe it or not, is deflating. We're down about 20000 from the peak. Not year over year, like most of the news outlets report with the median price year over year, Case Shiller Index, um, Zillow, et cetera, but down from the peak. So bubbles are slowly deflating, even though they're doing everything they can do to try to keep this propped up. But now with the new administration, do they want to keep it propped up? And is that why the whole discussion of can the Fed chairman be fired? Is that why that's coming up right now? Right, pretty interesting, folks. Let me know what you think about all this. But I think we're going to see a lot of things uh, jump up here or pop off, so to speak, that I don't think many people expected. So I'm continuing to play defensively, folks. And let me know what your thoughts are. I'm going to be reading your comments. By the way, I love your comments. Uh, I read your comments as much as I can. Um, don't have time to really reply to most of them, even though there's some great ones down there. Uh, I've learned. I've learned from a lot of your comments, right? So thank you to everybody for participating in this channel, Bulls and Bears. Really appreciate you being here. Please make sure you subscribe. Huge favor. I don't I don't beg for donations. Huge favor. Please subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give us a subscription. Help keep this channel alive. Thanks, everybody, for being here. As always, keep stacking. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Peace.